Hey there, welcome back to Coding at Home with Code Hub. Hey, uh, I'm Matt with the Code Hub, uh, here to walk you through probably our last session with the Everyone Can Code Puzzles book. Um, here, we'll just turn on the light. Um, so we've gone through a ton of material. We've been through a number of weeks of coding and working through problems. And um, this is it. This is probably our last session working through the arrays chapter of uh, Everyone Can Code Puzzles. So I hope, you, hope you've enjoyed it so far. I um, hope you're not crying right now. Um, this is what we're looking at doing next. We've got a little poll up on Twitter. Um, our Twitter handle is the Code Hub IE. Um, we've got a little poll. You feel free to chuck in your answer. Um, we've got options to explore app development with Swift a little bit more. We've got options to maybe build a game. Uh, if you like our reply to that, that poll. Um, we have options to do augmented reality, maybe a bit of um, picture taking with code. There's a really great Swift playground for that. Um, and then there's another really good playground that uses a lot of the iPad sensors. So the iPad has a, a camera built in so it can sense light. It has a microphone so it can sense um, noise. It's got an accelerometer. Um, there's a lot of fun things we can play around with with those playgrounds and those devices. So. Feel free to let us know either on Twitter or um, through our survey uh, with, at the codehub.ie slash surveys. Uh, we've just got a quick little anonymous survey asking you about your background, how much you've coded before you started this class, and um, where you'd like to see it go next. All right, so with that, let's get over to our, um, our last chapter, our arrays chapter. So let me go over to the iPad. And here we go. So I'm going to open up the books application first and just have a quick, quick check to make sure we know where we are. All right, I'm going to open up my orange student edition. All right, so this is iteration exploration. We did that last time. We did stacking blocks last time. This week, we're going to start working on getting in order which is where we kind of re we remove a couple elements from, from an array and then we stack the, the characters in, in order of height. And then we have this one here, fixing array out of bounds errors. This is kind of a common uh, error that we might see while we're using arrays in our code elsewhere. So this is a really good uh, demonstration of how to get around that problem and how to spot it when it happens. So those are the two main playgrounds that we're going to play with today. So let's, let's back out and open up Swift Playgrounds. And I'm in the quizzes app. So this is a, a good example of places where you can use arrays. If you remember Anya's quiz that she built earlier in the, the session, she actually had a, um, in the types page, there's an option to ask for a choice. You can maybe recognize an array there. So we've got an array of colors, blue, green, orange, purple, red, yellow, it's the same as the arrays that we were playing with last week. So I'm going to close out of the quiz playground. And I am going to go to my Learn to Code 2. So we're opening up Learn to Code 2. All right, and I'm on the Stacking Blocks playground because that's where we left off on Friday. Remember, we were adding blocks and in this case we were kind of playing around and we decided to add a portal yellow portals at each of the coordinates and you can see we're using all coordinates which is this world dot all possible coordinates and if we run it we can see that we're adding a portal at every single tile on this particular map Because this thing is an array, this property on, on our world, all possible coordinates is an array of coordinates. And if we change this all coordinates, because you remember this is a for in loop. So I'm iterating through all those coordinates and every time through I'm saying, okay, cool. This is the coordinate I'm going to be working with. So we'll give it, put it in this variable coordinate. 
we'll take the next one out of the all coordinates array and then we can use it inside in our block of code. So actually if I change this to this array, we'll see that we draw portals at many fewer locations. So just the corners. All right, we're gonna move on here by tapping on the stacking blocks title and we're gonna go to getting in order. So this is the next one that we're working on. Okay, so now we get to do something. So we've, we've iterated over an array, which if you remember from last week, we just go through each item in an array. It's like if we had a, a bucket full of stuff or maybe a, a drawer full of things and we just pulled out one, one at a time and, and inspected them, used them, and then put them back. Now we're gonna do something called manipulating the array. So we're gonna take things out of the array put things back in, insert them at different locations. Cause you remember it's an ordered list. So it does matter. You know, we're going to have a first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and so on. So where you can change the order. Um, and then we can also uh, add things to the end. If you remember. So, all right, so let's look at the goal for this one is place blue hopper and the expert in order by height. Okay. So here we have a reminder of what a type is named grouping of properties with methods and and uh, and everything. All right, and these are some of the methods that we have available on our array type. So we have remove, at, and then we provide an integer. And if you remember last week, we talked about the way you access something in an array is by its index. So the very first item would be at index zero. The next one would be at index one, index two, index three, and so on. So that's what that int is there. So remove at int would be removing an element at that particular index of the array. We'll go, we'll see this in practice in a second. Here we have a method called append new element, and it's just a, an element. So whatever type of items we hold inside of our array, so like if we have these are foods, we could append another new element, which is a food. Uh, and then we also have insert. So append will add it to the end. Uh, if we call insert, we can insert the new element and then separated by a comma, we can have this at parameter, which is an int. So again, we can specify the index. If we want to add something to the front of an array, we would add the new element at index zero. So just like before, we can use dot notation to call these methods on an array. So here's an example of we've got our favorite foods, an array of our favorite foods. When we call remove at two, it removes this one here, the sushi from the array. And the reason why is because that's zero, that's one, that's two. So now the new item at index two is this frying pan and the egg. If we called favorite foods dot insert spaghetti at one, we can see that we have the taco, then the spaghetti, then the strawberry. So everything's shifted right one for the rest of the array after that index one. So what we want to do with this playground is we want to remove the portal and gem from the characters array. So we have a character named blue, a portal that's kind of pinkish, hopper and we have a gem. So we want to remove both the portal and the gem. So let's do that. So to remove the portal, what we're going to do is we've got, we're going to type out characters because that's the name of our array. And now we can call some methods on it. And you can see in my autocomplete bar, it's popped up with a couple options for me. So what index is the portal at? Well, let's see. Blue is going to be at zero. The portal is going to be at one. The character hopper is going to be at two. So the gem is at three. So portal I said was at one. All right. So let's type in one. Now we're going to remove the gem. Oops. Here we go. I had to return key. Give myself a bit of space there. So again, I'll say characters dot remove. 
And where was the gem? The gem was at 0, 1, 2, 3. All right, so let's do 3. And now we want to insert the expert. All right, so how do we do that? We, we have our characters ar array again. We can call uh, insert. I can't remember how tall that character is, so maybe we'll put him at, at the front, maybe just to start with. So what we'll do is this the new element here that we want to add in, we can actually create one now. We can instantiate an expert. So let's do expert with the parentheses. That creates me a new expert. And I said, let's put it at index one. So no, actually, let's put it at index zero, just to, we'll assume that he's the smallest. All right, then we'll read the rest of the code here. We have a variable called row placement. So what we do is we say, and it's a number, it starts at zero. So for character and character, so it's going to loop through this array. It's going to place the character at the coordinates column one. So I'm guessing, let's see. Yeah, that's, that's right there. That's the middle. So column one, row placement zero. So if we look up row placement, it's equal to zero right now. Okay, so that's going to be one comma zero. So we'll have our first character show up there. And then we do this funny looking thing here. What this does is this adds one to row placement. So one plus zero is one. And then it assigns that value to row placement. So row placement is now equal to one. And the next time we go through, when we get here, we'll see that row placement is equal to one. So we'll place the character at coordinates one comma one. And then we'll add one to it. So it'll be two. So the next time through the loop, row placement will be two. So we'll place it here. Well, let's, let's check it out. Let's walk through this code and, and see it in action. Okay, do we remove the, the gem? Uh, all right, we had a small problem. Index out of range. Now we're, we're going to see this uh, in a little bit. But what? why do you think I got an index out of range? I thought I counted these. One, two, three, four. So that should be zero, one, two, three. Well, you, if you remember, I just removed the character at index one. So I have to remember that, okay, I, get rid of that portal first. So now it's zero, one, two. Okay, so g the gem is at two, not three. That's all that index out of range means that I don't have that many elements in my array. I tried to remove something that was beyond the end. Now, that's kind of handy because I got an error this time around, but it might be worse. I may have extra things in here. I may have had a character in here and the character may have been removed instead of the one that I expected, the thing I expected to get removed. So this can get kind of tricky and we'll work through this with the next, um, the next playground page we play with. So let's step through our code again. So now we remove the in thing at index one, index two. We inserted the expert at index zero. There's our expert because it was first. All right. Well, they don't seem too happy about that. I think maybe our expert is a little bit bigger than the other one. And you see, if you, we look at the hints here, we have a note about removing the portal from the array. It's the second item. So it's index is one and it has a definition of index for us. If I look at the very next hint, it says, after we remove the portal from the array, the index of the gem will change. Right? Because now we only have three items in the array. So when we insert the instance of type expert, they're saying, hmm, insert the expert at two. All right, well, let's try that out because we did it at zero. Let's, let's change that. So I'm going to go up here. Instead of zero, I'm going to insert the, the expert at two. Now there they have the solution. We won't cheat and look at that. Let's run our code and see what happens this time. Because all we changed was inserting the, the expert. 
Okay, well, that's still not quite right. I think that we should probably insert the expert in Hopper's place. So instead of two, let's say one. And now let's run our code. All right, we did it. Okay, so expert is a little bit taller than blue. And of course, Hopper's taller than all of them. Now, this is kind of a handy note here. There's some other methods on our array that we can call where we don't have to use the index to figure out what position a, a character or an item is in the array. We have remove first, which will do basically remove object at index zero. Remove last will remove whatever one is last. So we could have done that for gem because that was the last one in, in this array. And then remove all will empty everything from our array. So let's try that out actually. Let's try running this. And instead of saying remove the gem by calling remove at two, let's remove all. Or let's rem not remove all, let's remove last. So now let's run our code. Excellent. So we could have changed our code so that we didn't have that index out of range bug earlier. We could have maybe removed the gem first, the thing that's further down the array, because if we removed the gem, that would have been the object at index zero, one, two, three, and the portal index wouldn't have changed. So we could have swapped these two lines and still called characters dot remove at three for gem. Just a thought. So this this is when we have to start paying attention to what in what order we're executing our code because it's going to matter, especially when we're dealing with an array and if we're putting stuff into an array or taking stuff out because the size of the array will change. <clears throat> All right, so let's go up to here, up to getting in order. Tap on the title. We are going to pick fixing index out of range errors. So down here. All right, so our goal here is to identify and fix an index out of range error. So we can access the item using its index, like this down here, characters two jump. So who's that telling to jump? It's telling Hopper to jump because it's zero, one, two. And if we tell character zero to toggle a switch, well, we're telling Byte to toggle the switch because that's the first, the very first item in the array. Okay, so then they make a note that we saw, we've just seen already. Be careful, you don't try to access an item that doesn't exist. So we weren't trying to access the item, we were trying to remove it, but we still had the same kind of error. We had an index out of range error. So this code contains an index out of range error. Let's try running it, see if we can fix it. Because if you look, there's no, there are no red dots. So unfortunately, with these type of errors, Swift isn't able to pick up at the moment that we've got an error, that we're, we're trying to access an index that doesn't exist. So let's run our code and see what happens. Okay, we're placing blue across a row. Oh, and it jumps up. That one jumps, that one jumps onto the step. Okay, all right, we just had our error. So there we go, index out of range. So that's very like what we saw before. So who do we want to have collect the gem? I think we don't actually want to have anybody collect the gem. I think we just want to delete that line. Because if we read through our code, let's go back and read through it. Now that we've seen the error, we can see team blue car. It's an array of characters. So this here, we looked at this a little bit way back in when we were looking at types. So this variable, I've said that, okay, it's going to be uh, an array of characters. So I've said, I put the type character inside these square brackets. So that means that I have an array of type characters. I'm not going to keep anything else in there. I'm not going to put uh, ints in there. I'm not going to put strings in there. It's all characters. 
And then I assign it to this funny looking thing. So it's just two square brackets. That means that it's an empty array. So there's nobody on team blue right now. Okay, so what we do here is then we loop through from one to nine and we append a character by the name of blue to the team blue array. So now we've filled up our array with nine instances of the blue character. Then what we do is we say, okay, cool. So for every column in row four, we're going to place a new blue. So for blue in team blue, do you remember what that does? That's a four in loop that we worked with before. So it takes the next instance of blue out of my array. So in this case, it's the very first one. It places it in the world at a specific coordinate. So the column placement is zero. The row is four. So that's this guy here. And then we add one to column placement and then we hop back up to the beginning and go through it again. So it's going to be one comma four and then two comma four and three and four. Okay. And then we find the index of the out, out of range error. So we found that because we ran the code and we got an error. Now we could have also read the code here and said, Oh, do you know what? That index 10, that doesn't exist because we only have nine blues. So we have the first one jump. We have the second one, not the second one, the third one, collect the gem. We have the fifth one jump. We have the seventh one, collect the gem. And then we have the ninth one jump. So you can see this is the ninth one, the final one in my array of blues, this guy. So let's try running our code. All right, there we go. We're adding all of our our blues to the scene. There we go, collected a gem, jumped, collected a gem, jumped. Perfect, we did it. And there's a little description of an index out of range error. And we have a description of bugs. And you're always going to have bugs. In fact, you learn best when you track down, drown, down your bugs and then you know not to do a certain thing ever again or to, you know, you know how to spot it the next time it happens more often than not. So that's fixing index out of range errors. Just for kicks, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to appending to an array. Actually, we're not going to go to appending an array. Let's appending remove values was a good one, I think. Tell you what, these are really good exercises to try at home on your own. I'd really love to see you work on appending removed values and then appending to an array. Those are really useful. And then if you complete this whole arrays chapter, you get to the end and you can actually build your own world. So as cool as these worlds have been, as we've been dealing with, with Byte all along, you can actually make your own. Uh, it's very kind of Minecrafty. You can add water, you can add uh, portals. It's definitely worth your time. Um, so I highly recommend going through that. So go try going through appending, remove values, appending to an array, if you get stuck, drop us a note on live at the code .ie, uh, or go hit up our discussions forum, which is the code .ie slash discussions. And with that, before we take off for today, we're going to go back to the book here. And it also mentions going through your quiz. So that code hub answers playground is a great one to go play around with. Um, you can ask for choice a bit like here or like Onia's thing where you have options and you have an array of, of different answers that a person could pick. That helps you as the programmer because then you know that the value that's going to come back in this color variable is going to be one of these options. So you could write a, a bit of code that says, okay, well, if the answer equals blue, 
And you know it's got to be one of these because they can't type in another answer. It's only one of those choices. So you've limited your user a little bit, but you've made it way easier to write the code yourself. Um, and at the end of the book, they ask you, I really like this. Um, they ask you to keep a little app journal and, and write down some thoughts about how you feel the book went and all this material went. Uh, you've just been on a pretty big journey learning a lot about coding. And it, it's worthwhile to sit back and reflect on it and go back and check out your code from the very beginning. Um, we've gone through, if we have a look, we've gone through arrays and refactoring, while loops, logical operators, functions with parameters, types and initialization, conditional code, variables, for loops, functions, and commands. So we've been through a lot. Uh, and if you've made it this far and you haven't um, broken down crying, you're in a great position. Um, there's some links at the end where you can go further. Um, if you want to stick with us, we're going to try to go further over the next couple weeks as well as we're all still staying at home. Um, we're going to work through some, maybe some app development, maybe some augmented reality stuff. Um, definitely some more playgrounds. And um, we hope that you'll join us because you've, you've made a great start to your programming career. This is a ton of um, information that we've given you over the last couple of weeks. And um, yeah, we're, we're very grateful that you guys have uh, followed along with us. So we'll see you back. We will be back here tomorrow uh, at one o'clock. We're going to go through, we'll have a special guest star talking about um, some algorithms, which is in the Learn to Code 1 Swift Playground. And um, yeah, we'll be doing a little bit of kind of cleanup around the Everyone Can Code Puzzles book. And uh, we'll see you then. Bye.